Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Wanted to cover a couple of things. The PlayStation 3 emulator, an emulator that when I initially started PC gaming, I never thought it would get to the state that it is. But give a, give a round of applause to the RPCS3 team doing stuff that Sony themselves can't be bothered to do, uh, creating an emulator that has reached a major milestone. We'll talk that in a little bit. Want to give you guys an update on a topic I talked about yesterday. By the time I uh, uploaded the video, the video went live. Steam Replay had already gone live. I want to give you guys a brief update on that. And want to talk the nominees for Game of the Year at the Steam Awards. We'll talk that at the end of this video. So I'm a little controversy as in regards to that. But we'll talk that at the end of this video. First of all, RPCS3 put out an official tweet. We are delighted to announce that as of today, the RPCS3 loadable compatibility category has reached zero games. That means there are no PS3 games left that boot to a black screen on the emulator. Every PS3 game at the very least boots and shows image output. Happy holidays. Now, that doesn't mean every game is playable. Of course, there are a lot of games that uh, can't be played or they're just, you know, too stuttery, whatever the case may be. So now, nothing is at 0%. Loadable is at 0%. In Intro is at 3.42%, in-game is at 28.59%, and the playable category is at a 68%, 67.98%. We'll round it up to 68%. That is incredible. So essentially, just about every two out of three PlayStation 3 games are entirely playable on the RPCS3 emulator. If we could get that on the PlayStation 5, I guarantee you there would be a lot more PlayStation Plus premium subscribers. If you were to if you were to tell PlayStation 5 owners that if you sign up for PS Plus Premium, we can't get every PlayStation 3 game working on the PS5, but we can get two out of three PS3 games working on the PS5, bruh, bruh. That would be incredible, but that is not the case. I don't know what Sony's doing. The RPCS3 team is absolutely goaded for this. Um, obviously, there's more to work with on a PC, and this team is just doing it... Um I don't want to say as a... Like, it pretty much is a labor of love. I know they do have a Patreon page, but... Man, outside of that, it's not... Uh, like, they got 650 patrons. It's not like they're making a living off of this. RPCS3 is just an emulator that the team has been constantly working on. And I've just been following it the whole way through. And you just see progress being made year over year. And it's a resounding success. Given that when... You know, you talk about the PlayStation 3, everybody always mentions this cell architecture that's very difficult to emulate. I don't know too much about the ins and outs of emulation. That's way out of my pay grade. I'm too dumb for that. But this team obviously ain't too dumb for that because they've gotten RPCS 3 to a really solid state. And Sony, just hire these people. Just hire these people. Let them work on it. I'm sure they can provide some input on the ins and outs of this. And, uh, you know, maybe... The, maybe the team at Sony will eventually implement the PlayStation 3 emulation on PlayStation 5 as well, but I feel like people have been wanting that for damn near a decade at this point. Yeah, like, people have wanted that on the PS4, and the PS4 came out damn near a decade ago, so, um, yeah, like, take that for what it is. I'm not too much of an emulation guy these days. Like, when I first got into PC gaming, emulation was, like, what I gravitated towards. Like, it just blew my mind that you have the ability to emulate all these games just on your PC. When I first discovered PCSX2 and the Final Fantasy X remaster wasn't out and I could play Final Fantasy X on PCSX2, I was like, bruh, what? What is this? Is this real life right now? And then, you know, eventually I got normalized. It, it became normal to me. And the issue with me now is like, yes, I would love to play a lot of games on emulators. I would love to play, like, let's say The Last Story on the Dolphin emulator. I would love to play through The Last Story again because it's been like a decade since I played that game. Probably over a decade. Um, um, but right now, what takes priority is games that I actually have natively on my Steam library because my backlog is atrociously huge. And, uh, you know, we got to work through that before we talk about emulation and then you talk about games coming out. It's a good problem to have. Don't get it twisted. It's very much a first world problem having too many games to play. Like, that is very much like me being absolutely greedy and uh, complaining about nothing. Like, let's be real. There's a lot bigger issues in the world than having too many games to play. And emulation kind of opens the floodgates to having way too many games to play as long as you have a capable PC. And, you know, RPCS3 is a demanding emulator, but when you talk about, like, the Game Boy Advance emulator, the PS1 emulator, the SNES emulator, like, those things are like a cakewalk to run, and a lot of people do take advantage of that. But good on the RPCS3 team. Uh, go check it out for yourself. I just had, uh, like, one of my boys 
was telling me that they were playing Skate on uh, the PlayStation 3 emulator. And I was like, yo, like, that's just like, Skate, if they remastered the, the Skate trilogy, like, EA could print money with that. But people just play it on our, our PCS3. I don't know, like, with the quality level that Skate is, I'm, I imagine it's pretty good. But, um... Yeah, good on the PlayStation 3 emulator for making a lot of progress, and incredible that I never thought this day would have come that, uh, this many games. I thought eventually, uh, you know, I thought, like, ultimately, like, maybe a decade or two down the line from when I first heard about this emulator, alright, maybe at that point it'll get to a suitable state, but you gotta remember, like, the PlayStation 3 has this bevy of games that are just not being preserved because Sony won't implement backwards compatibility, so you're talking about games like Infamous 1 and 2, Metal Gear Solid, Solid 4, like, how we are not preserving Metal Gear Solid 4 is so mind-blowing to me. There's no remaster, there's nothing, there's no backwards compatibility, but... You know, it's just crazy to me how games on the PlayStation 3 that haven't been remastered... Yeah, you know what? The Bleach finale just aired, right? The Bleach finale just aired? There was a game on the PlayStation 3 called Bleach Soul Resurrection that was so good. It was actually a really good Bleach game. Oh, no, that's not being preserved. Well, no way to play it unless you dig up your PlayStation 3, which is just so, so unfortunate as far as consoles are concerned. Hopefully, at some point, Sony will get on it. And I think, like, at some point they will, but this has taken way too long given what Microsoft has done with the 3 60 as far as backwards compatibility. Yeah, not everything is available to play, but a lot of games are, so... Again, uh, tangent over. Moving on from that, I do want to quickly note that Steam Replay for 2022 is live right now. You can go check out your own Steam Replay. Halo Infinite was, in fact, my top played game at, like, 27%. I put out a tweet, and, uh, yeah, I should honestly be slapped for that. Like, um, yeah, I'm done with Halo Infinite at this point, but, like, I was playing that game a lot. And turns out, like, they have, like, a graph situated as well, and I'm but apparently I was playing that game a lot in October. I don't even know why I was playing that game in October. Maybe it was because I wanted to play a multiplayer game and then Call of Duty came out and then I jumped on that. I don't even know. But uh, nonetheless, you can go uh, check out some stats as far as that's concerned. Like Dying Light 2 was one of my top played games as well. I didn't even... I, I forgot I put that many hours into Dying Light 2 when it came out. Like it was a relatively lengthy game and there was a lot of content to it. But yeah, that is live right now. Lastly, I do also want to note that the Steam Awards for Game of the Year, the nominees are Elden Ring, which is probably going to win it, Dying Light 2, which I don't understand why that's there, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Stray, and God of War. If God of War is there, Persona 5 Royal should absolutely be there. Like what? Well, what are we doing here? And like you look at the Metacritic, I I'm looking at Metacritic right now. Like yeah, Elden Ring was there, Persona 5 Royal should absolutely be there. Chained Echoes, I get it that it came out at the end of the year, so probably not a lot of people played it, but uh, that's got a 92 on Metacritic. Uh, Neon White was a game that a lot of people talked up, so, you know, it is what it is. Like, Elden Ring will probably win. People will probably, like, disagree with it, but, like, out of this selection... God of War is a game from 2018, Stray, like, why is Stray being nominated for all these Game of the Year awards? Like, it was a good game, but Game of the Year, like, we're pushing it a little bit too far, in my opinion. I don't know. I, I like the game, but, like, Game of the Year is, like, pushing it a little bit too far. Dying Light 2, absolutely pushing it too far as far as Game of the Year goes. Like, I like Dying Light 2 more than most people as well, but, yeah, bruh, not Game of the Year. Um, I would probably put, like, seven or eight games just on PC over Dying Light 2 that I played this year. So, nonetheless, those are your nominees. Elden Ring's probably gonna win. People will probably be mad. But, um, yeah. That'll do it for me. Again, mostly a tangent on RPCS3. Uh, they're doing a great job with it, unfortunately. Um... Sony, I, I don't even know what they're doing, but, uh, yeah, hopefully they'll get it going, and, uh, we'll be able to play games like Bleach Soul Resurrection on a PS5. Nonetheless, there you go with that. Steam Replay is live right now, and as far as the Game of the Year awards go, Elden Ring, Dying Light 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Stray, and God of War for the Steam Awards. That'll do it for me. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting, but as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.